Eva Jesse, who graduated from Western in 1914, was the first African-American woman to gain international distinction as a choral director. She conducted the choirs for the original production of Porgy and Bess in 1935, a transformative event on Broadway featuring for the first time an all-black cast of classically trained singers. The play is considered the first great American opera and its iconic songs such as Summertime, I Got Plenty of Nothing, and It Ain't Necessarily So are theater classics. George Gershwin's genius brought the play to Broadway, but its long-term success rests on the shoulders of its gifted choral conductor, Eva Jesse, the only African-American on the production team and responsible for shaping the vocal arrangements of the songs and working with the singers to give the play its authenticity. For a white audience accustomed to the demeaning caricatures of blackface minstrelsy, the opera was a revelation. Yeah, George Gershwin, he needed, he needed some kind of authenticity. But he also, this was a Broadway thing, you know, it's going to be a Broadway show, there's going to be uh, those disciplines that go with that. But he also needed a choir director who knew both worlds. One thing about listening to the way, you know, a, a black person sings in an in a African-American church down south or in Kansas City, but it's another thing to know that, oh, they're using staccato here, they're using glissando here. And George Gershwin needed somebody who knew the sound, and he also needed somebody who knew that language. And she could interpret that in a language that the, that the, the choristers understood. Jessie's passion for music was shaped during her youth in Kansas. She was born in Coffeyville in southeast Kansas in 1895. Her grandparents had been slaves, and her neighbors either descended from slaves or came to Kansas as exodusters. When she went as far as blacks were allowed in her schooling in Coffeyville, she enrolled at Western. She excelled there, becoming an assistant to music dean Robert G. Jackson and singing with the Jackson Jubilee Singers. In 1927, Jesse published My Spirituals, an anthology of spiritual arrangements accompanied by stories of friends and family. In the book's preface, she writes that the spiritual she learned in Southeast Kansas held a singular meaning for people who had escaped depression in the slave states just across the border. Her reputation grew when her choral group became a fixture on the major Bose Capital Family Radio Hour. I think what made Eva Jesse's music and her choirs uh, so uh, in demand is that she could teach people, educated people, who could read music uh, how how to uh, how to sing in dialect. There's a certain rhythm to the way black people talk. The explosion of African American art, culture, and music that characterized the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s couldn't be contained. It spilled out of Harlem and spread to white Americans hungry for something new. Jesse's first major outing on Broadway was in 1934 in Virgil Thompson and Gertrude Stein's avant-garde opera Four Saints in Three Acts. Loosely based on the lives of European saints in 16th century Spain, the opera was the first to feature an all-black cast in a play that had nothing specifically to do with black life. Thompson, the opera's composer, was looking for a kind of soulful African-American chorus he recalled hearing in the Baptist churches in his hometown of Kansas City. And he needed a choral conductor who could interpret the musical score to Stein's libretto, which had no plot and words that made no ordinary sense. I got a woman who had a Negro chorus. Her name was uh, Eva Jesse, and her chorus worked from notes. I looked at it, uh, to know, to know, to love her soul, yes. And uh, I said, uh, he, he questioned our ability to do it. I said, we'll try, we'll try. you come tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So I called my choir together at 8 o'clock, and uh, Rehearsed them until 9.30. Then I turned them loose and I said, you come in at 10 o'clock and you haven't seen me since yesterday. So the tricks are never trained. And he comes in and he says, well, I hope they'll be on time. I said, I think they will. They're right around the corner. They should have been Well, they hit that thing 90 miles an hour. All right. He says, my God, I never saw such note reading in all my life. He didn't know we had studied out ahead of time. Yet my motto was and still is, I may not know today, I know tomorrow. Because I got the night that's in between. Four Saints in Three Acts ran for 70 performances on Broadway. In 1935, Porgy and Bess ran for 124 performances. Jesse remained associated with the folk opera for the next 33 years, touring the United States and Europe until 1958, earning the unofficial title 
guardian of the score. During those years on tour, Jesse became a civil rights activist, refusing to perform in segregated venues. In 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. selected the Eva Jesse Choir as the official choir for the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Her choir performed her own composition, Freedom is the Thing We're Singing About. And then, after King's stirring I've Got a Dream speech led the crowd of 250,000 gathered on the National Mall and singing We Shall Overcome. Spread the message far and near. The time is now. The place is here. Jesse continued to teach, compose, write, and produce her own plays until her death at the age of 94. Yeah, I think she changed people's mind about black singers and black entertainers. She changed, she changed the image. And, and when you think about the amount of black artists that went through Porgy and Bess who worked in those roles, it's like a who's who of black entertainment. 